So far you've built the ability to create and edit new categories and products in the chocolate store. In this tutorial you'll implement browse functionality for products on the website. While doing this you will also learn some of the alternative ways of working with models in the controller methods. As you learn, there is more than one way to do a lot of things in Spring MVC. In our chocolate store application, there is no way for users to browse for products that are sold on the web store. You will add a category list display on the home page, and on the category page you will show the products that belong to that category. First, let's build a list of products on the category page. Navigate to the category page. All we see is the category name and the description. Let's add a list of products that belong to the category. Open the category controller and go to the get category method. This is the method that gets called when the view category page is loaded. This method gets the category from the database and sets it into the model for display. Now what this method also needs to do is get the list of products that belong to the category and set that in the model as well. Then you can modify the view category JSP to show those products. The category service has a method called find category eagerly that basically does an eager fetch of all the products. We're using Hibernate to fetch entities from the database. When you fetch an entity using Hibernate, it typically populates all the member variables of the entity from the database. But if the member variable is a collection of other entities, it does not automatically fetch all of them. You need to explicitly ask Hibernate to do so. This behavior is called lazy fetching and it is the default mode. In this case, we need the product list member variable to be fetched. So we instruct Hibernate to fetch this list eagerly so that the category object that's returned has all the product instances available when the get products method is called. That's perfect for what you need to do now. Open the category slash view.jsp and add the code that loops through the category's products and displace them. Now deploy and run. You can see that the product list is displayed for each category. Now let's try another way of doing this. You've learned that in the controller method, you can set objects in the model and return the JSP name for the view. There are actually other ways to do this. Since it's common for every controller method to prepare both the model and view during execution, Spring MVC has provided a class called model and view. This is a container for both the model and the view, and you can choose to use this if you prefer. Instead of setting the model in the model argument and returning a view string, you can set the values into an instance of model and view object and return that. This approach used to be the default way of doing things in the earlier versions of Spring, and you might see this in legacy Spring applications, so it's a good thing to know. Change the return type of the get category method to model and view and import the class. After the category instance is ready, create an instance of model and view. This will be the container for both the model and the view. What's cool is that this class has a constructor that takes in the view, a string, the model name, and the model object. Since you have only one model here, this is perfect. Just return this instance and you're done. You can remove the model argument since you're not using this anymore. As you can see, you have still provided Spring MVC the same information about the model and the view, but with fewer lines of code. Some people prefer this approach and others prefer the first approach. There's no right or wrong here, but I definitely encourage you to pick an approach for a web application and be consistent. We are using both approaches in this application just for our demonstration. Now you'll add the list of categories on the home page. Open the home controller's home method. Let's first change this method to use the model and view approach here too. Replace the return type to model and view again and return a new model and view with the view name, model attribute name, and the model object. Remove the model argument that's no longer required. The method body is just one line now, isn't that awesome? However, you do need to add the categories list in the model. Now, how do we do that in this case? First, as usual, add a category service member variable and call the get all categories method. Now we need to add this information to the model and view instance. You can do that by calling the add object method of the model and view instance. This is how you can add multiple model attributes. 
update the home.jsp file to show the list of categories that link to the category page. Write a for loop that loops through the model attribute for the category that you've added in the controller and show a list of links to the category pages. Add the message to the property file to show the header. Run the application. You can see that the categories on the home page are being rendered and clicking on the category takes you to the category page where you can see the list of products in that category. There's actually one other way of doing this. Notice that we need the category list to be added to the model every time the home controller's methods are run. Whenever you need a model to be prepared for every controller method, you can actually move the initialization out to a separate method and tell Spring MVC to automatically call that method and set it as a model attribute. In the home controller, add a new method called fetch all categories. All that the method does is call the category service and return the category list. To tell Spring MVC to call this method and set it in the model, annotate it with add model attribute and the name of the attribute you want. You've already seen the model attribute annotation, annotated to a controller method argument to get the model attribute. But using the same annotation on a method sets the model attribute to that method's return value. Now you no longer have to set the category list in the model yourself in the home method. You can change that method back to the one line code that it was. Deploy and run. Before the controller's method is executed, Spring MVC looks at all the methods annotated with add model attribute, calls them, and sets them in the model automatically. So you don't have to do that in the controller method itself. In this tutorial, you have learned an alternative way of preparing model and views in the controller method using the model and view class. You've also learned how to use the add model attribute annotation to prepare and set the model attributes automatically. In the next video, we'll look at data transfer the other way around from the user to the application and better ways to work with it.